Now, I don't really know what to call this one, but we're actually taking the powers of Foe Tracer with its exotic perk, Relentless Tracker, combining it with our beautiful exotic submachine gun here, Huckleberry, and then merging it with one of my favorite rapid fire pulse rifles in the game, the Gambit Prime and Season of the Drifter rapid fire pulse rifle, Outlast. So without further ado, I present to you Relentless Bull. Huh? I don't know if you've been to a rodeo. I actually have. I've seen a few Relentless Bulls. I've seen a bull almost kill a man. So yeah, I had no intentions of being a bull rider, but that solidified it for me. Whoa, we got off subject here. Relentless bull though. Now what really led us on this rabbit hole here was the fact that one eye mask is getting nerfed. So the obvious thing that pops up for me is, hey, does Foe Tracer have a place now? Now both of these exotics mark targets, but obviously one eye mask takes it two or three steps further with health regeneration, overshields, as well as a targeting perk lasting for like eight whole seconds. Foe Tracer has targeting powers. It does provide wall hacks, but I think it's like four to six seconds at most. But see, that's only in 1v1 situations, which is why when I see people complain about Foe Tracer, they're normally complaining that this exotic doesn't have a long duration there in tracking, but it actually does. The issue is, is that Foe Tracer will start tracking any target you start looking at. So if you're looking at one target and you're hoping to obtain wall hacks on that one guy but you happen to look at another target well then foe tracer is just going to start veering off and tracking this new person so that's kind of the issue but a lot of people just associate foe tracer as having an abysmal duration there in tracking now both one eye mask and foe tracer both possess tracking with a twist but our exotic here foe tracer also has a twist of its own as it not only provides us tracking on enemies that we're targeting but we're also able to deal more damage to low health marked enemies, which is the whole reason why we're using Huckleberry and Outlast today, which kind of just brings us to what the term low health guardian actually means. In Foe Tracer's eyes, low health is any guardian that is north of 170 health. On average, I would say most guardians sit around like 192 health, but for today's testing, Bombat here is actually sitting at eight resilience, which is the equivalent of 196 health. But even a max resilience guardian at say 201 health there's only like a 30 point difference between when foe tracer activates and when they're dead so any weapon that automatically hits more than 30 won't really gain any benefits here with something like foe tracer like if you're rocking a hand cannon for the most part even your lowest impact hand cannons our precision frame hand cannons still hit 38 per body and 57 per crit so even though the number might show that foe tracer is working and you're dealing more damage on that tail end it doesn't even matter the guy is going to die from that shot whether foe tracer is activated or not unless of course you're outside of optimal range then yeah it, it is benefiting you because of range and damage fall off but ideally though the weapons you want to use with something like foe tracer are weapons that do very small amounts of damage but have high rate of fire or an exotic like thorn that does damage over time with soul devour that will continue to proc more damage on the tail end thus resulting in more consistent two taps with soul devour i've not actually tested this myself pretty sure nq had a video on it a while back a few other content creators i think it just allows you to kill higher resilience guardians but not max resilience now with all that being said the weapons of choice for me obviously a rapid fire pulse rifle here is perfect Horus least claws of the wolf outlast especially these weapons are very low impact weapons and they hit 24 per crit and 14 per body thus allowing these weapons to have almost a full burst there on the tail end to take advantage of foe tracers benefits and for our smg here to really get things amped up huckleberry is considered like a higher impact smg but we're pretty biased so that's why we're using it it actually hits 22 per crit and 15 per body and again as we get closer to killing guardians that damage amps up and you start to see a little bit more forgiveness so instead of it requiring something like nine crits it may require something like eight crits in one body again completely dependent on the guardians resilience values so that's what foe tracer offers it offers the greatest benefits to rapid fire shooting weapons but now we're about to get into the portion of the video that i really just didn't want to get into foe tracer and its benefits are pretty much hot garbage and and this is the part of the video that i didn't want to make because i originally gathered gameplay and was like yo we're gonna make a build with huckleberry and foe tracer it's gonna be nasty. We're gonna have a good time because the last thing we wanna get into right now after all the rant videos we recently made is freaking numbers, but Jesus Christ. So right here in front of us, we've got Bombat. Bombat is rocking eight resilience. He's had 196 health. I am rocking Outlast and I am shooting him in the body. It's showing 15 per body. 
I shoot a total of 14 shots into his soul, which should equal a total whopping amount of damage of 210, which is greater than 196 health, which means Bombab should not be alive right now. But notice he's still alive. So then we have to back up real quick here. We know that some numbers round in the game, so we could be having a situation where Outlast is actually doing 14 damage per body. So 14 times 14 should be 196 damage, which should kill this man at eight resilience but it doesn't this guy is still alive and he's not doing any shenanigans he's rocking just a flat eight resilience and by the way resilience values in shadow keep i'm almost certain have not changed i read a post just yesterday that mercules confirmed that resilience values in shadow keep are still the same as they were before shadow keep so eight resilience is 196 health and like it's one thing to have our damage rounded from say 14 to 15 or 15 to 16 you know just round it up even if the number is 14.05, for some reason inside of Destiny's engine, that 14.05 can somehow magically round up to 15. But what I have not seen is when a number can go from 13 point something, something, something and round all the way up to 15. How does that happen? And this is really frustrating because when we're testing things out to see how good an exotic such as Foe Tracer, which is supposed to increase the damage there on the tail end is, it's hard to tell because we see the the number values pop up yellow indicating that foe tracer is now activated but we don't know which damage values are the right damage values so take huckleberry for instance here huckleberry on paper or at least right here in front of us is hitting 16 per body 16 per body at 13 shots to the chest we're doing a total amount of damage of 208 which greatly exceeds that of bombad's eight resilience but notice we're not killing him. No, he is not dying. So the correct value for Huckleberry is probably 15 per body still, which is understandable. We know numbers can round by one. But watch this. 15 times 13 shots is 195 damage. 100 in 95 damage one less than bombats eight resilience here so whenever i attach foe tracer i would assume that foe tracer would at least give us one more extra damage to kill bombat right for instance if you take 12 times 15 that's a total of 180 damage we are very much north of that 170 thus resulting in foe tracer being activated so that final shot in order to kill bombat here all it has to be is 16 and we kill him lo and behold boys it shows 16 but it's not 16 pretty sure that damage there is the same as it was before so here's the reality is foe tracer working it actually does it actually works guys it really does and it works more noticeably so inside of pve despite this being more of a pvp exotic the problem is is by the time it actually starts working whoever it is you're fighting is gonna die anyways pretty much with all weapons even something like huckleberry here that should be getting the full effect of foe tracer because of its body shot damage it's supposed to offer more forgiveness the issue is two things number one numbers inside of destiny are liars they're just liars guys i mean we've already known this i just didn't know how big of a liar they actually were but when we got numbers rounding from 13 to 15 boys we got a problem so i don't know what sandbox needs to do but damage values have to be more consistent than that that is a lot of deviation there simply due to rounding but the other issue the one that actually punishes foe tracer is the fact that bungie doesn't give a flat buff to damage on the tail end when a guardian is close to dying so instead of bungie in the game saying okay this guardian you've already taken off 170 health which by the way is way too late in the gunfight but hey it's whatever at that point though instead of just being like here is a 10 percent buff flat meaning that 10 percent buff will remain constant from 170 health on that guardian to 201 health on that guardian instead bungie likes to do some voodoo magic and start it off at like one percent and then amp it up the closer you get to killing the guardian which sounds nice in theory but that guy that only has two health left is gonna die if you just breathe on him there's no reason why your crit value should jump up a hundred percent on his last two health so foe tracer would be an excellent exotic if they gave that flat buff from the moment it activates so over the next few days i'm actually going to test this more inside of pve i know on greg foe tracer actually activates and starts to ramp damage up whenever greg gets down to the last third of his health now obviously this isn't going to be beneficial everywhere but against high health targets raid bosses especially in this sandbox where buffs don't stack like they used to as well as debuffs i'm actually going to check to see if foe tracer is a viable option it does start off pretty small at like a five percent buff but then will ramp up 
upwards of almost 30% to 33% buff inside of PvE. And that's actually the case inside of PvP too. It starts off extremely small and will actually ramp up to like 33% buff. But again, the problem here with Foe Tracer is by the time it gets to the peak there of our buff, the Guardian's already dead anyways. Actually, a really cool exotic I was using this with was actually Anarchy and Merciless. Merciless really is cool because it actually lowers its damage as its charge rate becomes faster. For something like Greg, as we went into like the bottom two shots of our magazine there, where damage really starts to drop off, but again, DPS increases because of the rate of fire of this fusion rifle, Foe Tracer is actually picking that damage back up. So guys, we're actually going to be testing this more. This review and this build, as beautiful as it could have been, singled out two major flaws currently. Numbers on our weapons are lying even more so than usual and Foe Tracer's activation inside of Crucible is way too steep, almost to the point where it's not even worth it. Honestly, I think it's just a little too strict, and either Foe Tracer needs to give a flat buff, or it just needs to activate the moment we get into red health territory. But of course, that could become an issue in terms of balance. So who knows, guys? We'll be testing this out a little more, though, inside of PvE. So fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching, and as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right. <laughs>